Praise the Lord. Good morning. You guys ready for some good stuff? All right, let's start with a few testimonies. Move this stuff out of my way. First of all, uh, I tell you what, uh, Tony, would you make your way down? And Greg, Kristen Fisher, if you guys would make your way down. Uh, I want to have you guys come and share while they're coming. Uh, let's see. Let me just, let me say this. On our way to Kenneth Copeland's victory campaign this week, we, uh, come on up, please, you guys. Uh, got a, a little video clip in our text of a church down in Mississippi that just put up a, hundred, a white 150-foot cross. And uh, so we looked at that, and Shree and I said, we got we to gotta call the pastor and, and uh, congratulate him and the church. And so we got on the phone, and the secretary answered, and we said, we're just calling to congratulate you guys on your cross, and we'd like to talk to your pastor. And, and she was like, needed somebody to talk to. And I was like, we understand, we understand, we understand. And there she was talking about all of the uh, persecution that was coming against our church for putting up this white cross, 150-foot cross. on, And they're on the highway as well. On a inter, I don't know if it's an interstate, but four-lane highway. And uh, so we were able to encourage her. And uh, the pastor had just stepped out for lunch, so he called us later. But when we got off the phone, I told Shreya, I said, isn't that something? Got the same devils in Mississippi that they have in Minnesota. You know, and I, the verse that kept coming to me that afternoon was uh, speaking about Moses, that he chose to live with the persecution uh, and suffer with the people of God than to live with the uh, uh, wealth of and uh, lifestyle that he could have lived as uh, Pharaoh's son. Uh, grandson. So uh, we, we've we chosen this life, and we're glad to uh, receive persecution for the name of Jesus. Amen? So Dr. Hal called later that afternoon and said, Pastor, we just want to encourage you and tell you we've just been through the same stuff, and thank you for standing for the cross, and we had a really nice conversation. And I didn't realize, but we I don't know how many crosses we saw on the highway on the way from Minnesota down to Branson. Uh, but God's up to something. God is putting up crosses all over America. And uh, aren't you glad to be a part of that? So, so exciting. So had to share that. Uh, Tony called me this week, and I want him to share this testimony. Uh, he went to Paraguay with us. And that was a life changer, huh? <laughs> and he had something really cool happen. So tell us about that. Well, good morning, everyone. So, you know, we went to Paraguay in February, and um, I've been keeping in touch with a couple of people there, and one of the pastors, his name is Julio, uh, he's been sending me videos, and we've been back and forth uh, exchanging uh, all kinds of uh, videos and photos, so I don't know if there's a photo, uh, but anyway, there, there. if some of you kind of put it in context, there's a big church, like a central church, and then they have like nine churches, this is Julio right there. Uh, and he's one of the pastors, and of these nine, nine churches, or eight churches, I guess, satellite churches, there are small congregations kind of spread throughout the city uh, in the neighborhoods where people live. So about three or four weeks ago, he sent me a video where there were, and by the way, it's all in Spanish, so right? So like, I don't speak Spanish. So <laughs> it was kind of fun, but I kind of gathered, somebody interpreted for me, so thank you. Said, hey, uh, we're going and walking around the neighborhoods, and we do some evangelizing, and uh, so they've been praying with people in their homes and, uh, and so forth. And then about a week or two ago, he sent me uh, an email and said, hey, we need Bibles. We've got a lot of new believers coming uh, to church, and we also need uh, uh, Bibles for our, our ministers. So, again, it seems like, you know, for us in America, it's, it's pretty easy, right? You go to the Christian store, bookstore, you order an Amazon, and you got yourself a Bible. It's pretty simple. Um, it kind of reminds me of where I grew up in Soviet Union, so it was not very easy to get a Bible back then. Um, and uh, somebody gave me the Bible, actually, uh, some missionaries. I don't remember who, who were they from, were the Finnish or Swedish or American missionaries, but somebody gave me the Bible, which I still have. So uh, it kind of spoke to my heart, and I was like, yeah, we'll buy the Bibles. It's not a problem. And so he's like, hey, we're going to need 50 Bibles. I was like, hey, that's fine, 50 Bibles. It was $450. 
So I'm transferring him $450 uh, through MoneyGram. And uh, it's kind of interesting. Like, I'm, you know, Marie and I talked about it. We didn't even think about it. Hey, 450 bucks. It's not, it doesn't seem like, you know, breaking a bank, so to speak, right? It's not a big amount. So we're transferring the money. Uh, and while I'm transferring the money, I get a text on Facebook uh, from Marketplace. Now, <laughs> I put a <laughs> Luba stroller. We had a stroller for years. And I put it on Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace, like, in November. Nobody ever contacted me. Like, there was no, con you know, how those people ask questions. Like, nobody, nobody ever did. I put it for $500. Somebody sends me a text. Hey, I'll buy it for three fifty. Like while I'm transferring money to Paraguay, I'm like three fifty. Let me talk to my wife. An hour later, he texts me. Actually, four fifty. I'll pay you four fifty. Okay. So, so it's like so. Here, a guy three hours away. He lives north of Brainerd. Drives that night to pick up the stroller. Gives me four hundred fifty dollars cash. Obviously, you know it's not. Again, it was kind of an interesting exchange, right? So, um, so. To add to the bonus, a uh, little small bonus, they sent me a bunch of pictures, um, like literally like they're reported, like here's our pictures, like 50 pictures of all the people that received the Bibles. And they had like a wall saying, thank you, Tony and Maria. <laughs> they had our picture on it. It's like, that's pretty cool. So in that same time where um, I felt like, you know what, I'm going to do something special for Pastor Julio. So I, I uh, booked a room for him for Sheraton this Friday, last, this Friday. Um, so <clears throat> I didn't know any, you know, much about his life or whatnot, but I know his kids have been kind of communicating with him, with them. And, um, so anyway, I booked the, booked the room. It's like $136. Like, again, it's not breaking our bank here. So I'm communicating with his children and they're like, Hey, my, this is the best hotel in that city. That's the capital city of Paraguay. It's the best hotel of Sheraton. And my parents never been to a hotel, never set a foot in the hotel period. So. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. I'll pay for their dinner, too. So, like, add it to the tab. Um, and then his son texts me. This is um, it's really interesting because it's their anniversary. 30-year anniversary. So, <clears throat> I'm like, <clears throat> so, again, what's amazing is how God puts something in our heart, right? And we do it and just, like, blindly obey it. Uh, this is a great idea just to take care of it, not knowing how much impact it's going to have on that individual. Now, they're working out there. It's still 95 degrees in the heat of the day there, and they're riding their bikes and uh, motorcycles in the heat to go to the, to the to church in the day or uh, preaching uh, or evangelizing. So these people are super committed to the gospel, obviously, and it's fun to be able to share not only the Bibles with them, but also bless them in a different way that they never experienced. Isn't that great? So I can just picture the Lord, you know, in heaven. And he sees Tony, and Tony's sending these guys $450. And the Lord goes, I got I, I to gotta get him some seed. Cover that seed. And so he looks over the earth, and he goes, you know what? This guy needs what they have online. Let's just tap his shoulder and tell him to give 450 for it. Holy Spirit, and... Holy Spirit speaks to that guy, and he calls him and buys it for $450. And I said, Tony, that, here's the cool thing about this. Uh, God wanted Tony just to know, hey, I, I'm, I give seed to the sower. And you're a sower, man, so guess what? I'm going to give you that seed back that you just sowed. Is that cool or what? And it's, it's not about the 450 bucks. They would have, you know, they would have never missed 450 bucks, but they won't forget God saw that and blessed those people. And isn't that great? Here's one of our churches, one of our new 41 churches in Paraguay. And they're out scouring the neighborhood and invite the neighborhood to church. 50, some of them came and got saved and now are getting their new Bible. And uh, that's what God's doing in Paraguay. It's really quite outstanding. Okay, so I've asked Greg and Kristen to come. Last Sunday, you may remember, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge uh, that he was speaking to somebody about selling something so that they could sow that uh, into the prayer garden. So you remember? So on, on my way home, I looked at my text, and here was a text from Greg and Kristen, 11.58. It's, that's a, you texted 11.58, because we're in service and uh, he'll explain this. They're in church every week, but they had a, some circumstances. They were at home with, with some people and watching the service, and 
we'll let them tell the rest of the story. Thanks, Pastor. So it seems like whenever I'm up here, I'm sharing a little bit of a personal fail. <laughs> so um, the story goes back to last, uh, early last summer, um, the Lord put on our heart to sell my Durango, um, which I love, and to give $1,500 of that toward the prayer garden. And, you know, he was telling us to, you know, trust him. And, and there's been this process of God just teaching us to trust him in, in all the details, even though we don't really understand it. So we've been praying for a, a new vehicle. Actually, I've been praying over that truck for about eight years, the Lord, that it would just last another four or five more years, actually. And um, so the Lord told us to sell it and give $1,500 to the prayer garden. And, uh, and I, you know, was waiting for the blessing of a new vehicle. And uh, in October, the transmission went out on the truck. So then we got through the winter just, you know, using one vehicle, and then at the end of February, God blessed us with a new vehicle, but I still have, you know, this burden on my heart to give the $1,500 to the prayer garden, and there's this truck taking up driveway space. And uh, 25 miles an hour. That's yeah, yeah, the transmission went, and it's kind of stuck in first gear, but... Uh, so, you know, um, God's blessed us, but we still, you know, want to, uh, to do something with the truck because there's this, this promise out there, this command, if you will. And um, so what the Lord has been teaching me through this is that he just he wanted us to take a step of faith. And even when we were buying this new car, what we kept hearing from the Lord was step into the blessing, take a step of faith. Step into the blessing, take a step of faith. And uh, so, you know, I didn't know what to do with the truck. And then when Pastor said that last Sunday, I texted him. I'm like, yes, we still need to do something. I really don't know what to do. Um, so, you know, my human thinking is, well, maybe somebody wants it and can parse it for parts or something like that. And if they're willing to donate $1,500 to the prayer garden, I don't care who gets the credit. I just want to see God's vision come to pass. And uh, so that's, that's where we're at. But when, when Pastor said that last week, somebody out there has something that God told you to do something with for the prayer garden, I knew that was us. And so uh, thank you. So you still need it to sell. Okay, well, Lord, we just pray that you send them the buyer. You saw this, you called it out with a word of knowledge, and we just thank you for that buyer, that they'll be blessed, and uh, the blessing will flow on down to the prayer garden in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, guys. And just for clarification, Pastor, if somebody's willing to do that, we will just sign it over to them, and, and they can do whatever they want. We just want to see the Lord's will done. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, give them a hand. That was like a half-baked ham. Uh, hand. Ham. That was like a half-baked ham. <laughs> I don't know where the ham came in, but anyway. Okay, so we have a number of other things I want to share, but because of time, I'm just going to share one of these. And... Uh, uh, ask you to pray. So, uh, as you know, we went to Ken Copeland's Conference Victory Campaign in Branson at uh, at uh, Keith Morris Church, Faith Life Church, and great week. Just really super. In fact, we were planning on staying till tomorrow, but a week ago, I had a dream about this Sunday morning, and the Lord called it Miracle Sunday, and so I knew we needed to be back. Uh, but we had. Uh, Sheree was talking to Barry Tubbs, and uh, who's Kenneth Copeland's assistant that you guys have met. He comes here when they're at uh, Living Word uh, for the Faith Explosion each year. I think the last four four years, and uh, so we've gotten to know him well, and he he really blessed us. He uh, he's been getting us front row seats 
at these conferences. So if I say I'm, I'm the pulpit, here was the pulpit, and he saved us these two seats. And I could, you know, a lot of times Brother Copeland was like right here preaching, and I was like, I wonder what he's thinking here. Anyway, sometimes I wanted to kind of reach out and touch him, but I didn't want to get kicked out of the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it was just a blessing, and then we're invited to come back with the, some of the pastors and some of their their kings. And uh, so I was off talking with someone else, and she was talking to Barry, and then we kind of switched later. And I was telling Barry, I said, "Will you be back here before August this year, uh, when Brother Copeland is at Living Word?" And I said, "If you are, I'd like you to I'd like to show you our Owatonna campus and the prayer garden that we're putting in." And uh, I said, if not, we can wait till August. You know, it won't be a problem, but would, could that work out for you? He said, I'll, I'll make that work out. And uh, so then later on the way back to the, the room, uh, Sharice, I said, how did the, your time go with Barry? And she said, oh, it was really great. He said that what they would really like to do, and this is what we want, want you to pray about. He said, what we'd really like to do is put you guys on the front cover of the Believer's Voice of Victory and let people know about your ministry and uh, give your ministry some exposure. Well, they're believing for uh, this year to uh, bring on their one millionth partner to the ministry. And so I, I'm not sure the magazine isn't just for partners, I don't believe. So I, I have to believe that there are uh, you know, probably over a million believers' voice of victories that go out every month. How many of you all get that? Raise your hand, let me just see. Okay, okay, a number of you. And it's, I mean, it's full-fledged, all kinds of articles. And uh, so I told you, I said, you know, isn't that just like Jesus? It's just so much like Jesus, because, yeah, you know, he's here I am, ask him if he'd come down Sierra Otana campus, and I want to show him the prayer garden, and He's already told her their intentions. And so if we can, you know, which I'm sure they all want to once they see it, they'll, they'll make the prayer garden part of that article. Uh, the news of the Minnesota Sculptural Prayer Garden will go to over a million people instantly overnight. Now that's good advertising at a really great cost. Nothing. <laughs> Amen? And as we were coming home yesterday from Branson, I told Shree, I said, don't let me forget now when I, we go across the Minnesota border, I said, you know, let's be looking for billboards because I want to put, I want the first billboard when you come across uh, the state lines there. And uh, so there weren't any for some time. I was like, they must have a law or something against billboards in this area. I, I don't know why there wouldn't be something. But then eventually towards Elbert Lee, there are all kinds of them. And uh, so that's something we're going to be hunting down here to uh, catch everybody that comes across the border. Because as you know, there's over a million vehicles a month that drive I-35 in the southern, you know, southern part of, of the state. So, which that's where we live, in case you didn't know that. Okay, so <laughs> I wanted to share that with you. So please keep that in your prayers. I should tell you this real quick, too. Oh, there's just, God's just working everywhere. We went to Dolly Parton's uh, Stampede. How many of you have ever been to that one? Okay, a few of you. And uh, we sat down, a very vivacious uh, retired man uh, was sitting next to me, and he was like off to the races talking about everything. Nice man, nice man. And I found out his name was Mark, and I don't remember his wife's name. She was on the other side of him. And uh, so he says, are, are you a professor? I said, well, close, I'm a pastor. And uh, he said, oh, we're, we're Catholics. We go to the Catholic church. And so we had a real nice conversation. Then and when it was all done, I suppose because of that, he said, you know, would you guys pray, pray for us? I don't think he meant right then, you know, but would you just pray for us? And so I said, let's just pray right now. And uh, so I said, uh, but first I want to I ask you a question. I said, do you know if you're going to go to heaven when you pass? And he's like, well, I, I, I ho hope so. Can, can, you, you've heard me share about, you know, my years of sharing a little booklet. Are you going to heaven? Now I don't need the booklet because it's, you know, I've done it so much. It's, it's in my head. But uh, so he said, I, and then he said, well, I, you know, I hope so. 
And they said, well, what are you trusting to get you to heaven? He goes, well, you know, he said, uh, we're good people, and I pray at every meal, all three meals every day. That's the first time I've heard that one. Pray at all three meals every day. My grandpa was like that. He had to eat three meals, and they always had to be right on the clock. Or whatever, whatever. I don't know what, what that's all about. But anyway, uh, so I said, well, I said, Mark, let me tell you. I said, according to the Bible, there's nothing that you or I can do to get to heaven. I said, the only way we can get to heaven is through Jesus, because Jesus took our sins upon himself on the cross, and he died in our place and was re resurrected to offer us the same eternal life. And, you know, a little message, and, and uh, I said, would you like to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior right now? And he said, I would. And him and his, so I said, you and your wife grab hands, and we grab their hands, and we let them in a sinner's prayer. So if you guys would pray for Mark, Mark and his wife, you know, I, they're, they live somewhere in Missouri. Uh, but God's got people everywhere. His Holy Spirit is working everywhere. Let's just, uh, matter of fact, let's do that right now. Let's pray that God will send laborers to, you know, uh, feed into their, their spirits and, and help them grow in Jesus and, and find, you know, find a Holy Ghost-filled church. How about that? Okay, Father, we pray for Mark and his wife. Lord, good people, but we know that good people need a Savior as well, and thank you for the opportunity to share the gospel with them. Lord, we pray that you'll send more labors now across their path to continue to speak the things of God into them and to share the word of God with them. And Lord, we just pray somehow, some way, they'd have a divine connection with some Holy Ghost people that could bring them into a fellowship, a church body that where they could be fed and nurtured and loved and I learn how to walk in the things of God and the spirit of God and just bless their latter days in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's open up to Genesis chapter one. Also, if you're turning your Bible, go to Proverbs 10 because we're gonna be in both of those. And I have to pre-warn you about today's message. I've never preached this message. Uh, when the Lord gave me that dream, he showed me some things, but I, I didn't, didn't really have the message. And uh, this is actually, you know, nothing to do with the weekend that we just came from. Uh, but the Lord pulled all this together over the last couple of days. And uh, there needs to be a, a warning, you know, you know, like, uh, uh, that's really a poor example. I was going to talk, I was going to talk about the warning, the Surgeon General's warning on a pack of cigarettes. Why would I do that? That's stupid. Okay, but you know, there's different warnings and <laughs> on different things. So this is a warning on, on the message, M meaning this, get yourself ready. Are you ready? Okay, we'll find out if you're ready, but it's, it's really very, very powerful. Okay, Genesis 1, you guys are familiar with this. God said, let's make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and so on and so forth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. The image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. And I don't want to get political this morning, but I do have to just touch on this. I didn't touch on it last week because it was Easter, and Pastor Shree said, don't touch on that this morning. So I didn't. And uh, <laughs> But, you know, uh, with all due respect to the office, our president, uh, just passed a new new law on religious organizations that we are not allowed to call boys, boys and girls, girls, I can, if I can summarize that. And you know what it's like? I'm sorry, uh, sir, I'm sorry, but you may be our president, but you're not our God. And uh, God said he created two kinds of people, males and females. And that's it. There are no other uh, genders. It's male or female, and you don't get to choose which one you are. You don't get, pick your parents, and you don't pick your gender. You know, even though he declared, listen to this, 
Tell me this isn't spiritual. He picked Resurrection Sunday to be Transgender Sunday. Annual uh, observation. So you know what I say? (laughs) Same thing we said to the COVID rules. Amen. Well, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand that they're not over the church. The church is over them. We're, we're, in a, we're a part of a higher organization. And uh, so just in case you hadn't heard that, uh, I wanted you to know we need to be praying. We need to pray for our government. You know, one of the things that, that Brother Copeland brought out this week is that when George Washington, our first president, signed uh, the Declaration of Independence uh, and he prayed, he uh, said, oh, I, I, I might have them. Where do I have those? Anyway, he said, Basically this, God, we enter into covenant with you, the almighty God of the universe. And so America has a covenant with God. And for those of you who don't read your Bible much, let me just tell you, the Bible is very clear that nations follow how they serve or don't serve God. God blesses based on nations' decisions. And so our nation needs a little tweaking. That's just being real real nice about it. We need some tweaking, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have enough wisdom to know that in in our next voting round and get this thing, you know, back on track. So anyway, praise God. Teach your little people, they're a male or a female, they're a boy or a girl, and there are no other options, period. Okay. Oh, let's go back to the message. All right. So now notice verse 28. Ready? What did God do once he created Adam and Eve? He blessed them. And what did he say? Be fruitful and do what? Multiply. God's into that. And then he said, have dominion. God gave them certain things. And we're going to talk about one thing I'm not going to tell you right now. He gave them uh, the blessing, and he gave them dominion, and we'll talk about the third thing later. Okay, now let's go to Proverbs chapter 10. Now watch this. Watch this. The blessing of the Lord does what? Makes one, come on, give give me a little, Interaction makes one, makes one, come on now, not even half of you are joining in, makes one rich. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Now listen, the blessing was designed to make you rich. All right, here we go. Here we go. You're going to get challenged this morning. Well, I, I could never be rich. Well, that's what you believe. You're right. You never could be or will be. But we've got to set aside our thoughts and accept God's thoughts. And God said the blessing of the Lord will make one rich. Now, this word rich, in case you don't know what it means, and I, you know me, I like, I like to define words because it's very helpful. At least it is to me. I, it means abundantly supplied with resources. The blessing of the Lord makes one abundantly supplied with resources. <laughs> it means having wealth or great possessions. Are you adverse to that? Somebody said yes. The answer is no. No. You're not adverse to that. <laughs> and if you are, you need to change. You got to fix that. You're broken. Amen. But here, here's what you have to understand again. I mean, we all, we'll always come back to this because this is what it's about. It's not about you. It's about you being a blessing. 
It's about others. It's about a world that needs Jesus, and it takes money to get the gospel to them. That's what it's about. That's why you need more than what you need. Well, Lord, we just, you know, we just need enough for our four and no more. You selfish old thing, you. Repent. Why are you just trying to get your own needs met? Jesus wants you to be a blessing to others. He wants you to help plant churches all over the world. He wants you to help build church facilities. We're, right now, I've been talking with Timothy in Uganda, and as you know, we have a mission to these 72 islands in Lake Victoria that haven't even heard the gospel. And we've got four churches there so far, but they're just like poles with coverings over them. And we need to solidify the gospel on these islands and put a solid, well-built facility so that we can take the message uh, into the future on each of these islands until we get all 72 islands covered. Of course, God will begin to prosper them as well and bless them. We've seen that all over the world. Don't have time to go into that. So uh, know that God wants to make you rich so that he can use you to spread the gospel. Some of you may not know this. Lowell Lundstrom and I were good friends. And long story short, I told Lowell one time, I said, you need to start a church. I said, and I said, because I'm tired of hearing about, I'm tired of hearing about how your tires are wore out and your air conditioning needs to get fixed or the offerings, you know. And I was joking. We were having fun about it. And uh, I said, you, you need to get a church behind you so, you know, you, you have some help. And he said, well, I don't want to use people. I said, no, you, you, you got to change your thinking. They want to be used. They're saying, Lord, use me for building your kingdom. They want to be used. You need to want to give them an opportunity to be used, and everybody wins. He said, I just, I don't know about that. Well, I don't know. A year or two later, I saw him at a, I think it was a Home Depot. And he saw me across the store, and he, he said, Tim, I got to tell you something. I finally got it. I'm going to start a church. And they're like an hour, an hour, sorry, a mile from our house, Celebration Church in, in Lakeville, Minnesota, and it grew to a couple thousand people. And, and I told him, I said, man, then you'll have staff at the church that can help you with the, all the stuff that the Crusades take, and you have people traveling with you, and you have mechanics. And, and uh, sure enough, he, he got that understanding. And uh, he gave all these, these 2,000 people the opportunity to win souls, help people get to heaven, be used by the Lord. God wants to use us, and it's a privilege to be used by God. But you can't help with what you don't have. You can only help with what you have. Your resources, you've got to have resources, financial and otherwise. Now, Notice the next verse, or the next phrase in this verse. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Now watch this. And he adds no sorrow with it. <laughs> you know what I like about that? You know, the Lord just knows us. You know, and I, people are so funny. Here's what poor people say. Well, they might be rich, but they're not happy. How would you know if they're happy or not? <laughs> I mean, you never tried being rich. How would you know? Listen, you don't have to pick between being rich and happy. God said the blessing of the Lord will make you rich and make you happy too. One, one translation says the blessing of the Lord will give you a rich life. Yeah, that's better than just riches and financially. But he'll give you both. It's not, it's not like you got to pick. How are we doing so far? When God makes you rich, he'll also make you happy. Hallelujah. God intended for his blessing to make your life a blessing to others. Now, listen to this. 
When you when I say when I say things like that, Jesus became poor that you might be rich. I mean, I didn't say it. I'm just quoting Paul, but people don't know that. Then they get mad until they find out what he said, and then, then they here's what they say. Yeah, well, I just don't believe that. But don't worry about it. You'll never get to experience it. Come on, are you out there? Well, I just don't believe that. Well, that's not my problem. That's your problem. Because you have to believe it to get it. I think it was Brother Copeland this week said, I'm part of that. And you guys have heard me say something similar, but he, he added a really cool part. You know, I'm part of that name it and claim it and blab it and grab it, and that's why I have it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then another thing I hear about the prosperity of the gospel. Oh, but that's the Old Testament. Okay, so if you saw it in the New Testament, would you believe it? Well, you know, the truth is probably not. They already had their mind made up. But we shouldn't have our mind made up other than to make it up to say, if the Bible says it, I'm going to believe it. If the Bible says it, not only am I going to believe it, I'm going to endeavor to walk in it. So let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8. This is the New Testament. Did you know that? 2 Corinthians is the New Testament? Yeah. All right, I'm being funny. I'm trying to be funny. You're not laughing real hard. But anyway, I, I try. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we might, but a lot don't. That through that though he was rich, well, I guess he came from heaven, the richest place in the universe, right? Can you believe what we're going to get to live in? You don't like prosperity. I guess, you know, your only alternative is hell. So you might, might uh, want to embrace a little prosperity. Amen. Though he was rich, yet for whose sake? Your sakes, the the believers at Corinth, the, us believers today, he became poor that you through his poverty might become rich. Through his poverty, you might become what? Rich. That we might become rich. Turn to your neighbor and say, rich. Turn to your other neighbor and say, rich. <laughs> wow. So he became poor. Why did he become poor? So that you, through his poverty, might become rich. What's so difficult to understand about that? He became poor that you might become rich. Now, notice it doesn't say, and you will become rich. It says, you might become rich. Why? Why does it say that? Because you have to cooperate with God. These things don't just automatically happen. There are things that you and I have to do to walk in it. Just like salvation. It doesn't, you didn't automatically get saved. You had to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord and Savior of your life. Right? And then you start your journey with him. And you undergo a transformation through the, the word of God. All right? Same thing with this. It's not just going to happen. You have to do some things, and I'm going to share some of those with you. Okay? Here's a religious argument. You ready? Here's one of the religious arguments. Well, he's not talking about financial wealth here. He's talking about spiritual wealth in 2 Corinthians 8. Baloney. Have you ever read it? I'm going to give you a little assignment. Today, I want you to go home and read 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. I mean, if you really want to have a lot of fun, go to Bible Gateway and get see that there's 150 translations they give you. I won't give you the assignment to read 150 <laughs> translations of two chapters, but 
it's it's pretty fun stuff when you when you use that uh, app. So he's not talking about spiritual wealth. He's talking totally about financial wealth. He starts out the chapter talking to the churches of Macedonia, and he and he's challenging them and commending them for their zeal to give into the missions offering that he's raising. <laughs> that is about spiritual wealth. It's talking about financial wealth. So they can spread the gospel. And these guys were going through a tough season. There are seasons in life. Sometimes you're in an abundant season. And sometimes it's not as abundant. But they were... They were Irregardless of their them being in a tough season, they were still zealous to give. They wanted to give. They gave what they could. You can't give what you don't have, but you can give what you do have. And there are givers and there are takers in life. Just like there's males and females, there's givers and takers. Come on, are you out there? And you're either one or you're the other. And if you're if you've been a taker, stop. Stop, you're cutting off your own air supply. Start becoming a giver. I'm not just talking about at church. I mean, just be a giver. Just be generous everywhere you go. You know, open the doors for people. That's being generous. Just, you know, find ways to be generous and bless people. It's fun. It's a lot of fun. Um. I'm going to give you four steps to becoming rich. You ready? I'm just going to make this as simple as I can. This will take you a long ways if you'll believe it, receive it, and walk in it. Step number one, believe that Jesus became poor that you might be rich. Now, it's, 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 it's not as easy as like, okay, I'm going to believe that. Because you, you've had all this input in your head and your head believes something. How do you change that? You got to hear something different. So the best source of that is your mouth. Jesus became poor that I could be rich. Thank you, Jesus, that you became poor so I could be rich. Lord, your word says you became poor so I could be rich for the sake of the gospel. So you get to start programming. We're all programming ourselves every day by what we say. And it's, not, it's funny, people, they don't think it's weird to talk negative, but you talk positive, they think there's something wrong with you. You walk around and go, oh, I, just, I my, can't pay my bills. I just my, you know, I've got so many needs. They think you're normal. You might be normal in this world, but you're not normal, normal, according to God, you know. When you, but we walk around going, thank you, Jesus. You meet all of our needs. Thank you. There's more than enough. You're a big God. Thank you that you became poor so I could be rich. I'm a wealthy man. They look at you like, oh, he's lost it. But that's only because of where they are. So you got to program yourself. Get a hold of prosperity teaching. So you think bigger. You got you to expand your thinking. And it blesses your whole life when you start thinking bigger. Jesus said all things are possible to him who what? Believes. It is possible for you to become a rich man or a rich woman. But you got to first believe it. Get a vision for wealth for your life. What vision do you have financially for yourself? Isn't that funny? One of the most important things in your life, finances, and you, people don't have a vision for it. They don't have a plan for it. They aren't using their faith for it. But we obviously should be. See yourself the way God sees you. Wealthy. Okay, that's number one. Number two, pay your tithes and offerings. Now, why do I say that? Malachi 3, 8 to 10. This jumped out me several months ago. I think I, I think I talked to you guys about it. I know I did for sure know a ton of But people, you know, people... Uh, you know, pastor for 43 years, for 43 years, they've asked me, what about, you know, what about offerings? I go, well, they're optional. You know, you give what you want when you can. And I, I was wrong. 
Did I confess that to you? Yeah. Okay, thank you. I confessed that. It was wrong. And the Lord corrected me. And he took me to Malachi 3.8. And, and this is what I saw. Will a man rob God? See, I'm thinking tithes. Yet you've robbed me. But you say, in what way have we robbed you? It doesn't say in tithes. It says in tithes and offerings. You've robbed me in tithes and offerings. I <laughs> see, this is really tough for those of us that were brought up like in a religious church or a traditional church. You know, first of all, tithe 10%? No, I'm going to give them my five bucks. I don't know, maybe it's 20 now. I don't know what they throw in, right? An offering? Are you kidding? I already gave my. 20 bucks this year. Right? You know, I, I grew up in that system. Tithes is simple. I, I think it'd be better if they just translated it 10%, because that's what it is. Can't tithe nine, can't tithe 11. Can't, can, only thing you can give as a tithe is 10% of what you were increased. That's, that's what it means. No man picked it. God picked it. Hope didn't pick it. Nope. Apostle picked it. No pastor picked it. God picked it. God goes, every tenth dollar, that belongs to me. And you're to bring it to the house of God. That's his system. That's his system of economics. So here, here's, here's the simplicity of it. Your tithe is what qualifies you for a big harvest. It lets you in the game. Get you in the game. And now you can play. All these stupid analogies are coming. You know what I'm thinking? You got to get yourself to the table at Las Vegas. I was like, what? where's all this stupid stuff coming from? <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? You got you to get in the game. And that's what the tide does. You don't pay the tide. You don't get in the game. And you can say whatever you want. You know, pastor just wants my money. And no, oh, God wants your money because he's trying to win the world to his son, Jesus. And this is how he's going to do it. <laughs> and then your offerings are your seed for your harvest. See, now you're in the game. Now you get to sow seeds, and your seeds are what produce the harvest. We have a, a guy, some of you might know Travis uh, Moore in Owatonna. He sells seed to the farmers in southern Minnesota. And uh, I said, Travis, this morning I said, Travis, have you ever, I'm thinking no way, right? Have you ever had a farmer tell you, I can't afford to buy seed? He goes, oh, yeah. I was like, no, that's, that's not working with my message. <laughs> I got to have a little conversation. I, don't know what, I mean, if a farmer doesn't have seed, he's not going to get a harvest. So in my mind, I can't imagine a farmer ever saying, I, I can't afford to buy seed. You just gave your harvest away. I mean, if a farmer would borrow money to buy seed. Dale, you grew up on a farm. Did, you, did farmers do that? You did that, okay. I mean, if you don't have it, you got to have, you got to get the seed. The only way to get the seed is to beg, borrow, or steal. Right? So you borrow you, to buy seed to get your harvest, then you pay your loan back and hopefully have enough seed for the next year. And this is, this is the, the, the whole Bible is based on seed time and harvest. I told you in Genesis, there are two things I mentioned. I was going to tell you the third one. The first thing God did is he, he gave him the blessing. Number two, he gave him dominion. 
You know what the third one was? He gave them seed. He gave them seed. Why? Because if they didn't have seed to sow, they wouldn't have had a harvest the next year. So seed, your offerings are your seed. Okay, number three, become seed-minded, not need-minded. <laughs> well, first of all, as Christians, we shouldn't even be need-minded. I know, you know, Philippians 4.19, we all know, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But you have to understand, the wealthier you get, your needs really change. What I needed when I was 25 is pocket change today. I don't need that anymore. But sometimes I have other needs that are a lot bigger. <laughs> but you know, God's, Paul said that to his ministry partner. He said that to his ministry partner. My God will supply all of your needs. Why? Because they were sowing seed into his ministry. The only church that was, so we have that, this problem right back at the, at the beginning of the church age. People didn't want to pay their tithes or bring offering. But the Philippians did. Time and again, they sowed into Paul. But Paul said, God's going to meet your needs. In other words, you're going to get your harvest when you need it. Isn't that great? So become seed-minded. Oral taught us, Oral and Evelyn, uh, when they were mentoring us, they, they said, whenever we have a need, we sow a seed. Whenever we have a need, we sow a seed. Why? Because you've got to sow seed to get a harvest. It's how the, the laws and the earth work. Okay? So become seed-minded versus need-minded. Because God meets needs through seeds. And then, you know, so generously. Proverbs 11.25 says, The generous soul will be made what? Rich. The generous soul will be made rich. Here's the wealth connected with generosity. Number four, never stop sowing. No, I guarantee you, Dale and Sandy, when they were on the farm in Iowa, they never heard a farmer say, well, you know, I sowed seed last year. We should be good this year. <laughs> and nor did they go, I can't believe it. We got to sow seed again. We did it last year, and the ground is telling us we got to do it again. Of course you do. It's how the system works. And it's the same thing for us. We want to keep growing in this. And this is what Paul said to the Corinthians. He said, keep growing in your giving. Keep growing in your giving. Because it'll, it'll, your, your blessing, the blessing of your, on your life, it grows. So, you know, the Lord wants you to have more, but he wants to have more. And you pray for more, then he asks for more. <laughs> but why, why, what, what, why wouldn't anybody get in on that system? God's growing. I mean, I never imagined living like we live when, growing up. Never imagined that. We didn't, we didn't grow up with anything. You know, we had a lower to middle income, lower middle uh, income family. Never thought of that you needed more than, why would you need two coats? Why would you need two pairs of shoes? You know, I mean, other than dress shoes and tennis shoes. You know, that, that's the world we grew up in. I didn't have any thoughts outside of that. A lot of you can relate to that, right? Then the Lord says to me, we get, first we get married to Sharif. The Lord said, uh, clean out your closet. And he's going to fill it. 
and that's a long story, but she had cleaned out her closet, and the first person to show up right after that happened was her mom with 13 pairs of shoes. And I was like, 13 pairs of shoes? Why would you need 13 pairs of shoes? Well, found out there's a lot of reasons you need 13 pairs of shoes. I had a little guy, listen to this. I had a little guy today. He's how old is the Kaywood? Is he two now? Two year old little guy. He's so, I mean, just barely walking, you know? Two years old, and he had these like really nice shoes on. So I'm looking at his shoes, and uh, I'm looking at him, and he's looking at my shoes. And I was like, that's weird. And his mom goes, I said, he's been looking at my shoes. She goes, he loves shoes. He's two, and he loves shoes. <laughs> anyway, you lay, how many women here, okay, let's do it this way. How many here, women in here do not love shoes? No hand is raised. What's up with that? It's part of, yeah. Just take note, she's saying to the men, and buy them shoes. <laughs> so needs, needs change, right? Needs change. Okay. Um, let me just look at this real quick. You are where you are today because of your sewing. or lack thereof. You will be tomorrow where you're going to be based on your sewing today. You have control over tomorrow with your sewing. Pastor, I wouldn't pick, choose to be here. Yeah, you chose your sewing pattern. And they produced your lifestyle. Wow, but I, I don't I don't own my own business. I just I just get a, a salary and how am I how is God supposed to bless that? Because your salary is not your income. They're two different things. God's not limited to your salary. Oral ta taught us, he said, teach your congregation to make CFC their seed bed. Their seed bed. One translation says the world of the generous gets bigger and bigger. If you don't, if you live and die and never prosper, it wasn't God's fault. God left us instructions on how to change that. Last thing. Jerry Savelle this week said this, and I thought it was really good. He said, bring three things to church. You've, you've heard me say Number one, bring your Bible. Now, I understand. I understand. You know, I, I get it. Uh, I, even these meetings, I do the same thing. I, I have my phone. So I have my Bible. But I still, I still like to watch people walk into the church. Is that true of you, Pastor Dale? <laughs> what, is it because we're pastors? Or I, I don't know. <laughs> Probably. <yeah. laughs> But, at you know, at least bring it and your phone. Now, I know you also have the screens and, and all that. But anyway, this is what he said. Number two, bring your notebook. And you should, because I gave you so much today. The Holy Spirit gave it to me. The Holy Spirit gave you so much. You, you need to go back and re read this stuff and get it in your head. Because it'll change, change your life. The third thing he said to bring to church every Sunday 
is your seat. Bring your seat. Boy, doesn't that make a whole lot more sense now? <laughs> Bring your seat. Okay, ushers, if you could help me out. We prepared envelopes. Uh, you know, every year at CFC, we have three offerings. Other than, you know, so we do special guest speakers too. But other than that, we have three. We have one in the spring. Matter of fact, it's on one of these cards. You'll see it in a minute. We have three. One is in the spring. It's usually been March. The last four years, it's been for the prayer garden. In the fall, it's either September or October, we have the Fall World Missions Conference, which is why we're able to do all the stuff around the world that we're doing. And we're going to be able to do more and more because God's going to make more and more of you rich and more and more are going to catch the vision and come on in and we can just do more and more. I told Raphael, when you hit 50 churches in Honduras, we're going to throw a party. We'll kind of have a little one here too. And he told me last, last month, he goes, we're going to be throwing a party pretty soon, Pastor. 40, 41 in Paraguay, so when they hit 50, we'll throw a party. Amen? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. I know somebody, you know, 10,000 churches. I'm sure, you know, there's, you know, there's just people like, ah, it seems like a lot of churches. That's okay. We're just going to do it 50 at a time. 100 here, 100 there. <clears throat> and then we're going to stick around, live a long time, hope to be here for that 10,000th one. If not, then I'll have to turn over to Trey and make sure he gets it done. Or, or whomever, you know. So then we have one other offering, and that's in the winter. That's every December, first or second Sunday. That we, which we call the Remember the Orphan Sunday. It's our Christmas gift to Jesus because uh, he loves orphans. And he wants us to take care of orphans. Those are our three offerings a year. <clears throat> now, we didn't do one last month, and it's just the timing of it, and I guess it was just the Holy Spirit because last week the Lord gave me that dream and showed me today's going to be Miracle Sunday. And so I'm going to share with you what our needs are for the prayer garden. As you know, we're opening June 15th, okay? And here, there's just, I boiled this down to real simple four things that we need. Do you, do you have your envelopes? Did you get your envelope? Where are our ushers? You're not moving fast enough. Quick, 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 quick. Just like give like four, five, four, five, four, five. They can pass them down. And then they, you can look at these. The biggest thing is I gave you these to take home, pray, but uh, let me just start on them for the sake of time. Number one, we need to finish the base of the I-35 cross which if you were down there, if you were down there at the ribbon cutting ceremony, you saw the base. It's made out of pavers. It's going to have a paver sidewalk around the outside of it and then two steps and then you're up on the top. And right now we're waiting on the lighting, although the lighting has now been picked. It's, it's picked out. It's going to light every inch of that cross every night. It's going to be so, so tremendous. So we're on the card that says Prayer Garden Needs 2024, if you want to look at it with me. So that's 68000 Um, And they only stopped work because, you know, the weather got crazy. They couldn't, they couldn't work. So lighting package number, is number two, and that's 39000 for that. And then number three is the landscaping around the pedestal out front, which is where we're going to put the uh, Christian family sculpture. And we're gonna go. We're gonna go wacko on this one because this is what everybody's gonna see when they drive up. And I was walking through the airport. I don't know, six months ago or whatever it was, a year ago. I can't remember. And uh, I took a picture of this planter. And it was full of plants and shrubs and bushes and flowers and all that stuff. So we're gonna pack that out. And we got two small areas, a little bit area on the west and the east that has to be finished up. So that's twenty five thousand. And then finish and install the Christian family sculpture. We have 215,000 left on that. Uh, we've got we've paid 250,000 so far on it. And uh, <clears throat> I sent out. If you don't get our emails, you need to get on our emails because uh, I shared with you that uh, now that we're done with the finished cross and we're done with the uh, I-35 cross, you know the Eagle Bronze Foundry is just a uh, bronze foundry is just a little company. So. Uh, we've had to delay the Christian family because they're working on these other pieces. But now 
they're on this. So they're going to try to bring it out in two or three shipments so we can at least get something out there soon. And so <clears throat> we got two fifteen. So all four of those total three hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. What was I going to say with that? Um, so that's it. Three hundred forty-seven thousand. Not that there aren't other things that could be done, but that this is what we would really like to do to 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 be uh, to open up. So uh, this morning, I want to ask if you're prepared to give to give. Uh, if if you need to talk to your spouse, go ahead and start talking to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, uh, you know, if you need to, more time, that's fine. Uh, but try to do something soon because we're we're knocking these things out. And so, first three hundred forty-seven thousand. So, first thing I want to ask is, uh, would anybody like to and be willing to write out a check for three hundred forty-seven thousand? This morning. Oh, you, hey, I, I wouldn't put it past the Lord. How'd you like to be blessed to be able to? I'd like to do that right now. I know a bunch, a bunch of us all would like to do that right now, but you also got to have the ability to do that, right? Okay, so should we move on or pass that one? I'm not going to assume that, but okay. So now, one thing I shared with CFC and Otana is I said, now, you know, we're kind of responsible for at least half of this at each church. So that's 107, I had it down before, 170, what is it? I'm drawing a blank. 173.5, yeah, 173.5. Sorry about that. Usually really good at numbers. I've been using my calculator too much. I'm noticing it's slowing down a little bit. I quit using that calculator. Okay, 173.5. Anybody want to write out a check for 173.5? You do, just do this quick because we want to get you home today. Okay, that's okay. All right, does anybody want to do 100? And Ken, <laughs> anybody want to do 50? This will be a good time. I got, a, I got about $75,000 of checks to write this week for, for the the cross, and the sculpture. Okay, where are we at? 50,000? Anybody want to write out a check for 50? Now, I know, I know some people are private. You like to do this private, and that's fine. You know, uh, we'll take the 347 privately as much as publicly. <laughs> so if you're private, I, I you know, I, I say I get it. I don't really get it, but my wife's tried to teach me. I'm trying to get it. I'm just, you know, I'm not one of those people who have much of a privacy matter issues, you know. But I've had a couple daughters, so I've learned, you know, people do. So I try to honor that. So hear that, you know, just hand it, hand me the check later or give it to Marie. And, uh, okay, what's, what's next? 25? Anybody want to write it out 25 today? Nick and Teresa, thank you. Thank you so much. That'll help a lot this week. Thank you, Lord. We uh, have about 100 from Oatana, so uh, this this week will be covered. But, you know, that we got to finish those two. I, I, I pay my bills, so I, I pay them on time. So uh, that's why that's important, especially when you're working with the world, you know. Okay, so... Uh, 25. Anybody else want to do 25? I mean, and can write out a check right now. Okay. All right. 25. What What should we say next? 10? I think there should be a bunch of 10s. I, one of the things I believe the Lord showed me is there's a bunch of 10s that you could write out a $10,000 check today. Who Who is that? Let's do this quick, though. And you And you want to and you can. Who is that? Let's have a little music. I'm just kidding. I shouldn't do this. I did this old time. I said, now, old time, you got to understand. If you guys don't, you know, get your half, you know what that means? Edina's going to take your half. <laughs> now I got to tell you, you guys don't pick it up here. We had seven do 10,000 in Otana. 
So anyway, I shouldn't do that. We're one church. I know I don't want to create like a competition, but maybe just for a minute or two I could. No, did anybody stand for 10? Wally, Deb, welcome home from, welcome to your real home, Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> Snowbirds, thank you very much. Who's right, who can write this down? Cindy, are you right? No, who writes this down typically? You got it, honey? Okay, that's, is that one? Oh, we're really getting off to a slow start here. Who, who else you'd like to do 10 this morning? And you can. Mm-hmm. Oh, gee, I almost forgot to tell you. Uh, this seed, I felt with, with my dream, was your seed to becoming rich. So if you sow into this, believe this is your seed for becoming rich. or Richer, a life of wealth, especially if you've never sown with that in mind. Okay? So you're, I, I, I know this in my spirit. There's, there's a number of you, you, you really, you're, I don't know what you're waiting for because you really want to do it. You're just kind of like, uh, who is that? Let's, let's do it. Let's, let's get her done. Thank you, Lord. And if you get up, we automatically charge you twenty five hundred. <laughs> I'm teasing somebody that's walking out. <laughs> okay, that it. I know some of you are private. You want whatever? That's fine. You just fill out. Here's in there's a card. I guess the back of that. No, where is that? Oh, I got two of this. I get two of the same. No, here's a commitment card. You can fill out, yes, Pastor, count on me to help continue building the Minnesota Sculpture Prayer Garden. One-time gift, three-month, monthly gifts, six-monthly gifts, 12-monthly gifts, or whatever you make up, whatever monthly gifts. And it just gives an example of what it would cost to do 10,000, 5,000, 2,500, 1,000 for three, six, or 12 months. So if you could, you know, if you don't want to stand up, if you want to fill that out and drop it in the offering basket, you can do that. Um, and then also, please be in prayer uh, because we really need that 347 to, to come in here for the next couple months. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to move on if that's it. Are we done? Steve's saying, yep, we're done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, thank you. Thank you for the privilege of being called to build this prayer garden as CFC. Lord, thank you for what you've done through your church family here. Thank you for their generosity. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you that. But you can keep that going. That was nice. Thank you, Lord. We just ask you to help us finish what we've done and Lord, that it can win tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of people to you, bringing healing and health and wholeness and whatever other needs people might have. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Sri, do you have anything? You're good. Thank you, Father.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. For whatever reason or purpose, I just feel like the Holy Spirit's just sitting over us. I, like Genesis, that the Spirit hovered over the face of the earth. I feel like the Holy Spirit is hovering. Let him, let him touch your life right now. He's hovering over our congregation. Lord, thank you. I don't know what you're doing, but Holy Spirit, you are welcome here at any time and all times and do whatever you want to do. and Do it the way you want to do it. Just as you hovered over the face of the earth, we feel you hovering over CFC this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You came with a need. You need healing. Just stretch out your arms and say, thank you, Jesus, for your healing anointing right now. Because the Spirit of, of the Lord is hovering. You need a financial touch from God. Stretch your hands out and receive that. You need a familial touch of God or a marital touch of God. Whatever need you have, reach just reach out and let the Lord know you, you receive that now as he's hovering over his people. Thank you, mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's moving, he's touching people. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord's doing something, and I'm not certain what exactly all he's doing, but enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Just absorb his presence.
I sense the Holy Spirit saying, I am going to move in ways you have not seen, in ways that you have not heard, in ways that will cause you to be astounded and watch in wonder, says the Lord. I have things planned and prepared that I am about to pour out upon you. And it will begin soon and you will see things you've not seen through dreams and visions and you will hear things you've not heard hearing them in your spirit and even in your physical ears says the Lord. I'm preparing an outpouring upon you. And I will touch you. And I will overcome you. And you shall know that the Lord God Most High has visited you, says the Lord. As things have been, they shall be no longer. And as things that have been prepared, they shall come. And as things that now are will no longer be. For I am breaking through from my dimension into yours and bringing you, you from your dimension into mine, says the Spirit of God. Prepare yourself, be ready, for I come. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I love it. Lord, we love hearing from heaven. anybody else have a definite word from the Lord for the church? Greg? This goes back, um, you know, even to the testimony that I shared earlier today and this is from Romans 8, 15. For you have not received the spirit of slavery leading to fear again, but you have received a spirit of adoption as sons by which we cry out, Abba. God wants to, God has delivered us from poverty mindset. God has delivered us and wants us to walk into the blessing. But man, sometimes we make mistakes. And then we fall back into fear again. But that is not the spirit that dwells within us. Cry out to the Father. When we make a mistake, sometimes we wait. We just kind of bend over with shame and we wait to hear the sound of the whip crack. God says you've been delivered from slavery and from fearing. Amen. Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Jim, do you have something back there? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's stand and receive the blessing and go be a blessing. Go ahead and lift your hands up to heaven. Did you take the tithes, Trey, or talk about the tithes? Okay. All right. Father, thank you for your blessing upon our lives. And may the Lord empower you to prosper in every arena of your life. May he increase you more and more you and your children. May you know him as El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. Be blessed and go be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great day.